Welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to solve the integral of 1 over the square root of a plus bx plus cx squared. Here, a, b, and c are simply some numbers. We don't really care what they are. I just want to make this as general as possible so that, you know, if you have any integral of this form, you can simply plug in your values for a, b, and c, and then you can just go with the result. Okay, um, so what we want to do here, whenever we have an integral like this, is that, as I've said in other videos, if we have an integral of some square root and inside you have something squared, then there's a good chance that it's an, a trigonometric integral, right? So we would like to get to something like 1 over the square root of something, maybe, uh, maybe not a, d, plus x squared, or maybe not x, but z squared, after some change of variable. And with this, we could easily see that this is something like tangent square theta plus 1, and we could use another change of variable to solve this. Um, so that is the direction that we want to go. However, we don't have that. So how can we go from this to something of the form d plus, you know, something squared? Well, the answer is that we want to, or what we can do is we can take this and complete the square because when we do it, we will end up with something squared and then constants. So let's complete the square. So complete the square. So let's see, we have bx plus cx squared and this is the same as, now first of all, let's factor out c, at least I like to do it like that. So we get c, x squared plus b over c x and this is the same as c times x plus b divided by 2c all of this squared and then we have to subtract b squared divided by 4c squared and now if you want to check that you did this correctly you can simply multiply through and you should get exactly this so let's see x squared plus 2b divided by 2c plus b squared divided by 4c squared minus b squared divided by 4c squared. These two cancel out. We get b over c times x, of course. I almost forgot about that. And yeah, we have exactly the same. So it is indeed factored correctly. So this is a way to rewrite uh, our denominator here. So this is the integral of dx over the square root of and then we have a plus c times x plus b divided by 2c and all of this is squared and i will write this separately and then we have minus b squared divided by 4c why not uh, c squared because we have to multiply this c with that part so one of the c's cancel out and uh, the square root of course covers all of it so let me now rewrite it just to make this very clear. So that is equal to the integral of dx and I will change the order. So we have a minus b squared over 4c plus c times x plus 4b, uh, sorry, divided by 2c and all of that squared. And now look at this. We can see that we have some constant and here we have something squared. I mean, you can even go as far as uh, changing the notation here and saying, okay, this is the square root of C and all of that is squared, right? So now we actually got to the point where we have something squared plus some constant. Now, of course, it looks very messy, but don't forget A, B and C are simply constants. So how do we go from this to this first part right there being one? So now let's go ahead and factor this out. So we get the integral of dx divided by, and now we have the square root of a minus b squared divided by 4c. And this is now multiplying everything that was inside. So we have a 1, right? That way, when we multiply this first part, we end up with this, which is exactly what we had. And then we have the square root of c divided by a minus b squared divided by 4c 
and this is now multiplying x plus b divided by 2c. So this part here is squared, and there we go, and everything is inside of the square root. So these things, right, that's simply a constant, we can take it out of the integral, right? So we can go for the, this is 1 over the square root of a minus b squared divided by 4c, and then we get the integral of dx over 1 plus, and now I will do a slight change of notation, because I want everything to be squared. So I, I'm going to go for the square root of c divided by a minus b squared divided by 4c, and then x plus b divided by 2c, and everything is squared, right? Now, th this entire part there, I simply used a, a little change of notation, right? If we actually multiply through here, it ends up being the same as before. And why do I write it like that? Because that way, what we have here is the square root of 1 plus something squared. And that means that I can use later on a change of variables that gives me something like 1 plus tangent squared of theta. And since I have the square root of that, I know that 1 plus tangent squared of theta, that is, the secant squared of theta, which means that the square root will cancel out and I end up with the secant of theta. So that is the whole objective here, right? That's what we have been saying. We are looking for this trigonometric identity and we are simply cleaning up notation for that. Okay, so to clean up notation, and before we go into this whole tangent thing, let's say um, maybe z, z is equal to this monster. So z is square root of c a minus uh, b squared for c instead of a square root and then x plus b divided by 2c so z is that entire thing thus dz this is the square root of c a minus b squared for c and then x or rather dx and so of course that means that dx this is simply 1 over this thing. So that means uh, that's going to be square root of a minus b squared divided by 4c divided by c. Uh, I guess you could simplify that, but it's going to cancel out later, so I don't really care. Okay, now let's plug it into our integral. So plugging it back in, we get 1 divided by a minus b squared divided by 4c inside of a square root. And then we have the integral of dx, but dx is the square root of a minus b squared divided by 4c divided by c dz. And then we have square root of 1 plus z squared. And there we go. Look at how the notation is getting much cleaner. And now this and this will cancel out. So what we end up with is going to be even better. So we have 1 over the square root of c integral of dz 1 plus z squared. And will you look at that? And we have actually solved this before in this channel. I will uh, link the video in the description in case you want to look at it more in detail. Uh, I will still explain it here, but you know, the, if there are any details you don't understand, perhaps you will understand it better in that video. Um, so as I mentioned, to solve this, we want to go for a trigonometric substitution. And since we have this 1 plus something squared, we can say, okay, z is going to be tangent of theta, which means that dz will be the secant squared of theta d theta. So we plug this in, we get 1 over the square root of c, integral of the secant squared of theta d theta, divided by the square root of 1 plus tangent squared, which is the secant squared of theta. However, square root will cancel out with this, and the remaining secant will cancel out with that one, so we end up with simply the secant of theta. Now, how do we solve this integral? Again, it's explained in the video, and I even made an entire video about this integral. Um, I will put all the relevant links in the description, but the way to solve this is to use a very, uh, a very clever trick. 
right? Uh, I, I describe the the logics, uh, the logic behind the trick in the video about this integral, if you want to take a look at it. But the trick is to multiply by the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta divided by the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta. And then we say, okay, let's use a substitution. W is exactly that thing. So secant theta plus tangent of theta. And thus DW is going to be the derivative of this, which is secant of theta tangent of theta plus the secant squared of theta. And of course, d theta. So from this, we can find d theta and using the fact that we can factor out here. So if we factor this out, we get just a quick comment there, secant of theta factor of uh, tangent theta plus secant. So tangent theta plus secant theta, which is exactly uh, w, right? So I'm going to write this further down. So d theta, this is, um, let's see, that is the w divided by secant theta w. Again, I'm going a bit quicker because I have an entire video about this. So if this seems confusing, just uh, go take a look at that. Now we plug everything in. So we have one over the square root of c integral uh, of the secant. So take a look at this. Secant theta times, now let's call this and this w besides, well, they cancel out anyway. So I guess we don't really have to. And then we have dw divided by the secant of theta w. So the secants cancel out. That is the the whole purpose of this. So we get one over the square root of c, and then we have integral of dw over w, which is of course the natural log. So this is one over the square root of c, and then we have the natural log of the absolute value of w plus some constant. Now, of course, what is w? So we need to plug that in. So w is the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta plus some constant. But what is the secant theta and the tangent theta, right? That was not what we started out with. So we saw that z is equal to tangent of theta. All right, so if z is equal to the tangent of theta, then that implies that there exists a right triangle with an angle theta where the tangent is z. Right? So that means that since the tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, that means that this side is z and this side is 1 because the z divided by 1 is z. Right? So th that's basically writing it like this. Okay, um, So that means, of course, that we can now find the secant of theta. right? Because the secant is 1 over cosine. And what is cosine? Cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse we can find using Pythagoras theorem. So 1 plus z squared inside of a square root, that's the hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is 1 over the square root of 1 plus z squared. And thus the secant of theta is the square root of 1 plus z squared. So now we can just plug it in. So this is the square root of 1 plus z squared, and the tangent of theta is simply z. However, z is also not what we started out with. So z we defined as this beast right there, and that is the final substitution that we need to make before we can uh, finish this problem altogether. So what we want to do now is take this expression and just plug in what we have for c, uh, for z, sorry. So our end result would be 1 over the square root of c, and then the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of 1 plus z, z squared, so this thing squared, so c over a minus b squared divided by 4c times x plus b divided by 2c squared plus z. So simply um, the square root of c a minus b squared divided by 4c. And then we have x plus b divided by 2c. And finally, well, we close this. 
right? Um, sorry, no, the, this is only up to there. And then close that plus uh, some constant of integration that I just now realized I called C. This is supposed to be just C1, right? Some constant of integration. Um, so yeah, we got to be a little bit careful there with our uh, labeling. So there we go. This is the result for this integral. And it's valid, of course, for any A, B, and C, um, especially if they're positive. So yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.